Hello, my companions. This is Earl Purdy. And I want to welcome you to a course Welcome you to a course, a course in miracles. And today's topic is let us recognize the problem so the problem can be solved. Do you want your problem solved? So we're going to talk about how you have your problem solved, how you have your problem solved. We're going to be talking about let me recognize the problem so the problem can be Solved. Lesson 79 in the Course in Miracles workbook, page 141. In the Course in Miracles workbook, the workbook is, is the Course in Miracles is three books in one. So you have a text, a workbook, and a manual for teachers all in one book. It's the blue book, the foundation for inner peace version of it. I'm going to start out today. A little bit different. I'm going to start out with a meditation mm. that is going to be a recap of what I covered last week up to the point that we are now. So what I want to invite you to do is take a breath, close your eyes, and, I, and, and if you can listen to what I'm saying, that's great. If you want to drift off anywhere, that's okay too. But let's take a breath. This, this, so this is getting us centered. Do you know a problem cannot be solved if you don't know what the problem is? Even if the problem is already solved, you'll still have the problem because you don't recognize that the problem has been solved. This is the situation that you're going through right now. This is the situation of the world. Do you know the problem of separation? which is really the only problem is the problem of separation. Do you know that that problem has already been solved? but we don't recognize the solution even though that problem of separation has already been solved because the problem isn't recognized. So if you have any problem, you, you haven't recognized the problem. Wherever you have a problem, it's actually where you have not recognized the problem. Everyone in this world seems to have their own special problems. Yet all the problems are all the same. All problems are all the same. All problems are all the same. All problems are all the same. And all problems must be recognized as the same. If the one solution that solves all your problems are to be accepted, you have to say all my problems are the same. All my problems are the same. Because how can you see your problems have been solved if you think the problem is something else? How can you tell that the problem is been solved if you think the problem is some other problem other than what the problem is? How can you know the problem has been solved when you think the problem is something other than the problem is? If you think the problem is something other than what the problem is, do you know when you get the answer you won't see the relevance of the answer? This is the position in which you find yourself now. This is the position in which you find yourself now. You have the answer. You have the answer. But you are still doubting about what the problem is. You still got a doubt about what the problem is, even though you have the answer. A long series of different problems, a long series of different problems seems to confront a person. And it seems like as soon as you get one problem solved, another problem comes up. As soon as it looks like it, as soon as you get one problem solved, another problem comes up. Don't you notice sometimes that there seems to be no end to problems? Sometimes it seems like there's no end to problems. Have you noticed that sometimes there is no time in which you feel completely free of problems? and at peace? Do you know that sometimes people don't feel completely free of problems and at peace? The temptations to regard your problems as many problems is the temptation to keep the problem of separation unsolved. As long as you keep saying you got many problems, then it keeps your problem from being solved. Stop saying you have many problems. 
Stop saying you have many problems. Stop saying you have many problems. Stop saying you have many problems. When you tell yourself you have many problems, it keeps the problems from being solved. I know the world seems to present you with a vast number of problems, and it looks like these problems require different answers. Believing that you have a lot of problems that need different answers, do you know it puts you in a position where your problem solving is inadequate whenever you think you have a lot of problems that need a lot of different answers? It keeps your problems from being solved. Do you know that no one can solve all the problems the world appears to have? Nobody can solve all the problems the world seems to have. There seem to be so many problems in the world on so many levels. There seem to be so many different problems on so many different levels in so many different forms with such different content that it looks like we are being confronted with an impossible situation. It seems like there are so many problems in the world that we are confronted with an impossible situation because there's so much that needs to be done. Sometimes it seems like we're in overwhelm because it seems like there are so many problems in the world. And so your temptation might be to feel dismay and depression. Sometimes it can look like you have so many different issues and things that you're dealing with that it makes you feel dismay and depression. It looks like some of your problems spring up unexpectedly. Just when you think you got some, everything is going really great, all of a sudden you could have a problem spring up unexpectedly. Just as it looks like you just resolved the previous problem, it looks like some of your problems some of your problems are unsolved because you are in denial about them. Some of your problems seem to rise up to hunt you from time to time. And then they seem to disappear without being solved. Okay. So one of the main problems to having problems solved is telling yourself you have a lot of different problems. So we were told that if you want to have your problem solved, whatever the issue is, stop telling yourself that you have a financial problem, a money problem, a job problem, a relationship problem, a health problem. The Course in Miracles is telling us, stop it. Stop saying you have a lot of problems. Stop saying you have a lot of problems. It's saying, tell yourself, you only have one problem, and that one problem has been solved. This is the answer. What we're hearing is the answer to having your problem solved. Because he says, if you see it as if you have a lot of different problems, he says, you're going, he says it right there in that lesson. Spirit says it. You're going to fail. And that's why it seems like there are so many problems that have not been solved. Because people will tell you they have a lot of different problems. They need a lot of different answers. And the Course in Miracles is saying that's the mistake. It's saying you have a lot of different problems that need a lot of different answers. Or that your friends have a lot of different problems that need a lot of different answers. Because sometimes with the Course, the temptation is to kind of practice it on yourself a little bit, but absolutely don't practice it on other people around you at all. Like in other words, I'll say I create my experience. I'm responsible for what I see. But I find myself not applying it to you and then saying you're responsible for what you see and everything that happens to you, you ask for it. And you're the one that's choosing the feelings that you're having because, because they are also under the same laws of God that you're under. So you, no one's ever really a victim of you. No one's ever really a victim of anyone because everything that everyone experiences is what they have asked for at some level, but they, even if they didn't know it. I say that again. Yes. Mm -hmm. You, no one has ever been a victim of you because nothing that's ever happened to you or anybody else was not something that you yourself at a soul level created for yourself. Okay, so you can't give me a cold. I can use you to give me a cold. I can perceive you gave me a cold. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's what the course is saying. Like we go, well, I got to be careful because I might catch this virus. You will only catch the virus if you want to catch the virus, but nobody else gave you the virus. <coughs> now, so that makes me have to say this. 
<laughs> really, really quick. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, there you are. Hear ye, hear ye. Remember only this. You need not believe the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. You need not even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas you may actively resist. Some of the ideas you will find hard to believe and others may seem to be quite startling. You are not asked to judge the ideas at all. Their use will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that the ideas are true. Those are the guidelines. So, I, so if it seems like I'm being, being pretty intense when I say stuff like nobody's a victim of anybody from a metaphysical, spiritual perspective, that's the truth. So, <clears throat> nobody can solve all the problems the world seems to have. Nobody can solve all the problems the world seems to have. No one can solve all the problems the world seems to have. There will be no one that can solve There was no one that can solve all the problems the world seems to have. No one can solve all the problems the world seems to have. And the Course says, and this is the part that's so cool, on page, um, mm, I'm so excited to go through this. Uh, on page one, we're on page 141, and we're, gonna, and we're starting off at paragraph six in the, man, in the workbook. So, uh, and I'm going to do it in a way that will make it conversational. All this complexity is but a desperate attempt not to recognize the problem and therefore not to let the problem be resolved. What, what did that just say? When, when, when you want to make things complex, it's really an attempt not to have the problem resolved. So if you don't want a problem resolved, you call it complex. When, you, when a person doesn't want a problem or an answer they see the situation they're going through as com complex. So the Course in Miracles is saying complexity is an attempt not to have the problem solved. Okay. Do you know that many people see problems as complex? Would you say that's what most people do? Okay, so we already know the result of seeing a problem as complex, we see that every day. Because that's what people tend to think. So we already we, we are already seeing the result of thinking the way the world thinks. We, can we agree with that? Yeah. So if we take on the exact same perception <laughs> that everybody else has, what makes us different and what would be the answer? Mm -hmm. So if the world thinks we are a victim, we're victims, then the truth must be we're not. We already, we're in the world based on the ideas when you think you're a victim. It just creates more victims. So the Course is saying, whenever you tell the same thing, if the world say you, says you have a complex problem, the truth is, telling you that from a, the world's perspective of it, it's going to keep the problem from being solved. It must be good. <laughs> All right. I see you trying to go in and out on the live broadcast. <laughs> All right. That means I'm kicking butt. That's good. Go, oh, man. Go. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you all, but I want to make the Course of Miracles practical so that I can apply it to my everyday life. Okay, so whatever the situation is that you think you're dealing with right now is causing you any kind of uh, conflict or fear, uh, you want to tell yourself it's not a complex problem. You want to remind yourself that this is just one problem. This is just one problem. I'm having the same problem take another form. And that problem is separation. Okay? Then it says, if you could, if you could recognize that your only problem is separation, no matter what form the problem takes, the only problem is separation from God, separation from each other, separation from the thing you want. The only problem is some form of separation. 
If I want to, if I want to fill my oneness with God and I don't, I'm feeling separate from God. If I want to pay a bill and I can't, I'm feeling separate from money and my abundance. You see what I'm saying? If I'm feeling sick, I'm feeling separate from health. The only problem is some form of separation. And so it says, so if you could recognize that your only problem is separation, no matter what form the problem takes, you could accept the answer. Because you would see the relevance of the answer. I will accept the answer that you're giving me if I can see it's relevant. I need to have my time changed. You have a jack. Then I can see the relevance of that solution. <laughs> so I can accept the answer, which is to give me the freaking jack so I can change my time. Yeah. So I got to see the, that the answer is relevant in order to have the answer and to accept the answer. So a person will be much more willing to accept an answer that they can see how it's relevant to their problem than it is trying to give a person an answer and they don't see how it's relevant to their problem. So if some people, if, they, if they're told they're sick and they have some disease and you say the only problem is separation, how fast do you think they're going to use that? Yeah. I don't think they're going to use it at all because they don't see the relevance to I have a disease and, the, and separation could be the problem. So sometimes the reason why people won't accept the answer, the course is saying the reason why you guys won't accept the answer that I'm giving you in the book is that you don't really believe that the answer that I'm giving you will solve your problem. You don't really believe that if you said you had one problem and if you said that one problem was separation that you would see your problem solved. That's why you don't remember to use it. That's why you don't remember to use it. That's why you don't remember to use it because you don't think it will really work and give you what you want. Okay, got that? Okay, then it says, perceiving the underlying constancy in all the problems that seem to confront you. What is the underlying constancy in all the problems? The, the separation. Okay, the underlying constancy of all your problems is the idea that you're separate. Separate from God, separate from the answer, separate from each other. The problem is separation. So he says, if you would understand that, then he goes, you would understand that you have the means to solve all of your problems. I I'd like you to say that to yourself right now, uh, aloud or silently. I have the means to solve all my problems. <laughs> I have the means to solve all my problems. I only have one problem. 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 I only have one problem, and that problem has been solved. I only have one problem, and that problem has been solved. I only have one problem. I only have one problem. I only have one problem. He says, and then, if you realize you had the answer to all your problems, he said, well, the next logical thing the Course says is you would use it. Oh, wow. What? You mean if I got the answer, the next logical thing is I need to use it? Yeah, because I recognize the problem. The problem is separation. I'm being told to tell myself the problem is separation. That the only problem I have is separation. I'm being asked to say that whether I understand how that would solve my problems or not. Just say it, frigate. Just say it, doggone it. Just say it. What spirit has said to me? Just say it. And I'm going, but I don't understand. You understand it isn't a powerful contribution to the truth. Your understanding don't make stuff work. Yeah. But get your understanding. Your understanding is what's <laughs> slowing you down. You're needing to understand everything as if your wisdom is what <laughs> determines whether things work. It's what's keeping you from having your one problem solved. Right. That's what the Course is trying to tell us. Some things you're not going to be able to figure out and do on your own. Yeah. Some things you're going to have to actually be taught, Earl, and then you're going to have to use the <laughs> idea that I'm telling you. Tell yourself, I only have one problem. Can you say that, Earl? Yes, I only have one problem. So that's why I want you to follow along in the book. He says, in our longer practice periods today, what will we do? We will ask what the problem is, and then we're going to ask what is the answer to it. We won't assume we already know what the problem is and what the answer is. So what do you do? Ask what the problem is. 
And what do you do? You ask what the answer to it is. So what do I do? I, what is my problem and what is the answer? What is my problem and what is the answer? What is your problem and what is the answer? What is the pro You ought to ask what the problem is and ask what is the answer to it. And third, we will not assume that we already know. <clears throat> so would you ask right now silently, I ask what the problem is, and I ask what the answer to the problem is. I'm asking what the problem is, and I'm asking what the answer to, or you could take a personal issue you're dealing with. I'm asking what the problem is with my finances, and I'm asking what the answer to that problem is. I'm asking for the answer to the problem of my sense of separation from God, my sense of separation from love, and I'm asking what the answer to that is. I'm asking what the problem is, and I'm asking what the answer is. Very specific instructions. Then he turns around and says, we will not assume we already know. Okay, so stop assuming that you already know what the answer is. In that problem that you're dealing with, in that situation that you're dealing with right now, stop assuming that you know what the answer is. Stop assuming that you know what the answer is. You know that relationship? You know that relationship? You know what I'm talking about, that relationship? Stop assuming that you know what the answer is. Stop even assuming you know what the problem is in your relationship. Stop assuming that you know what the problem is on your job. Stop assuming that you know the problem. Stop assuming that you know what the problem is. Ask what the problem is, and then ask what the answer is, and stop assuming that you know what the problem is. Very specific. Then what does it say next? We will try to free our minds. Didn't say free my body. It says we're going to try to free your mind. So how do you free our mind? What, what is our mind? Our minds going to be freed of? The course says your minds are going to be freed of all the many different kinds of problems we may think we have. We're going to try to free our minds of all the many different kinds of problems we think we have. We will try. What? We will try. We will try to do what? We will try to free our minds of all the many different kinds of problems we think we have. Okay, how do you do that? How do I free my mind of all the many different kinds of problems I think I have? What do you do? We will try to what? Realize what? That we have only one problem. Okay, so how do you free your mind from all the many different kind of problems you might think you have? Now, I want to repeat every week. Whatever I'm teaching in my course class is geared toward and for those who can relate to that need, right? So if you feel like you have no problems and everything is hunky-dory, beautiful, wonderful, great, all right? But, and I'm glad you're here and you're reinforcing that. But there are people out there and possibly people in here who think they do have problems right now and a lot of issues that they feel like need to be healed, that they do feel like they are separate and alone. You see what I'm saying? So, so the course is always appealing to exactly the person that's in that space that needs what it is saying, which is deep, right? And right now, I want to have no problems. So I need to ask, what is the problem? What is the answer? And I'm not going to assume I know what the answer is. What is the problem? What is the answer? And that's whatever area you think you're having a challenge in. If you have a health problem, go, what is my health problem? What is the answer to my health problem? Mm -hmm. And I will not assume I already know what the answer to my health problem is. And at the spiritual level, it can be, I'm asking what the problem is of God, and I'm um, asking what the answer is of God, and I'm, I'm not going to already assume that I know God's answer. So whenever you're dealing with the truth, you can always apply truth to any situation. So don't feel self-conscious in my perception about taking the Course in Miracles principles and applying it to putting your clothes in the laundry. Because in the Course in Miracles book itself, the annotated version, there is example after example of uh, Helen, the channel of the course, going to Jesus, the Holy Spirit, for simple stuff like what kind of coat she's going to wear or buy. 
that 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 in the, in the unedited version of the course, Jesus of the course is saying, "I want you to give me all the trivia and the details that you deal with every every day in your regular life, so that you can be free to fulfill your function mm. of, of of being here to be a, a demonstrator of love and forgiveness." For, so you can do your spiritual purpose. It's like being on scholarship. It's like we'll take care of the room, room and board if you work on forgiving. And that's what. And, and, and so I'm telling you, don't let your ego make you think it's not okay to go to God for everything, even in something that you think of as an illusion. Don't let that. Don't let your ego screw you by you saying you think everything is an illusion when you know you would be so hungry in two days you wouldn't know what to do if you didn't yeah. eat. So you don't really believe it's an illusion. So stop saying stuff that you really don't believe yet because your reality is showing you you lying to yourself. <laughs> yep. That's why sometimes if you love somebody and they don't love you, then your reality shows you they don't love you. <laughs> so you can let it go. Because it's hard to let go of something you think is benefiting you. Mm. But it's easier to let go of things you really see clearly are harming you. So when you say you want the truth in any situation, you got to be ready to have everything about it revealed, even maybe some stuff you wish hadn't gotten revealed because you want to know the truth. And so he's saying you want to free your mind of all the many different kinds of problems we think we have. We will try to realize how you do that. He says, well, we will try to realize we only have one problem, which we fail to recognize. So we just have one problem that we don't recognize. That means the world doesn't know what the problem is. That means your sisters, your brothers, your aunts, your friends do not know what their problems are. The reason why they have all these issues is because they don't know what the problem is. And, we, and the reason why you would have your issues is you also don't know what the problem is. So you need to realize you only have one problem. And the court says, we, then we'll ask what the problem is, then we'll wait. Uh -oh. Wait, wait, wait for the answer. <laughs> Ask what the problem is, wait for the answer. Ask what the problem is, wait for the answer. Wait for the answer. Wait, wait, wait for the answer. Wait for the answer. And what's going to happen? We will be what? Told. Told. Wait for the answer. Okay, so what's the process? Ask what the problem is, wait for the answer, <coughs> and we will tell you. Ask what the problem is, wait for the answer, and you will be told. Ask what the problem is, wait for the answer, and you will be told. You will be told. You will be told. You will be told. Then we will ask for the solution to the problem. Ask for the solution to the problem, and you will be told. You will be what? Told. You will be what? I'll tell you what the answer is. But you got to you ask me, though. So how many times do you stop and ask the Holy Spirit's guidance before you make any kind of decisions about anything. <laughs> How often do you literally stop when you're planning and go, I'm going to stop right now and I'm going to ask God's guidance about this? How many of y'all do that all day long? <laughs> how many of y'all, how many of y'all, before you decide on things, you, you literally stop and you ask what the problem is, ask what the answer is. Don't assume you already know the answer. How many times do you do that? On occasion. Yeah. For the big yeah. stuff. Not yeah. the little stuff. Yeah. More. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's rare, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So is, so is there is there a, a relationship between us using the truth rarely and having a lot of issues that we think yeah. we're good at? Is there, is, could there be some kind, some kind of connection between I'm not practicing the truth and so I'm not getting the result that I'm looking for? Okay. And is this very specifically, is this very specifically telling us what to do? Are we getting very specific yeah. instructions? Yeah. Right. What? Ask what the problem is. Ask what the problem is. Ask what the answer is. Don't assume you already know. Free your mind from the different kind of problems you think you have. Try to realize you have only one problem, but you don't recognize the problem. Ask what the problem is. Wait for the answer. You will be told. Ask for the solution. You will be told. Ask for the solution. Ask for the solution. Ask for the solution. Ask for the answer. And you will be told. <laughs> so, so, the, so how do I get this to work? How do you get this to succeed? The course answers that in the next sentence. He says, the exercises for today will succeed to the extent, uh-oh, you'll be successful to the extent to which 
you do not insist on defining the problem. <laughs> so what do we do all the time? We try to define the problem. We say that's why you fail. Because you're the one that's trying to define the problem, but you don't really know what the problem is. Because if you really knew what the problem was, it's that the problem would be gone. So the only reason why you think you have the problem is you still don't realize what the problem is yet. So you need to ask what the problem is, and you need to ask what the answer is, and you need to stop assuming that you know, and you need to start telling yourself, I only have one problem. Very specific instructions. I need to have people in my life that will help me remember to go to this, which I say is my spiritual path, when I think I have problems. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? Uh, now, if you try to define the problem, did it just tell us you won't be successful? So if you keep on trying to define what the problem is, the Course says you won't be successful in terms of uh, receiving the answer to the problem. So, now check it out. He says, Perhaps you will not succeed in letting, perhaps you will not succeed in letting, perhaps you will not succeed in letting all your preconceived notions go. Okay, so I know you're still going to think you have some preconceived notions about what you think the problem is. I know you're going to still think there's a part of you that thinks you really have figured out what the problem is and you know if they change everything will be all right because they're the one that's the problem. So <laughs> we already know the problem is always, you know, somebody or something outside <laughs> myself needs to be different and then that would be how we know what the problem is. You're not acting the way I want you to act and you're not doing what I want you to do the way I want you to do. You know what the problem is. You're feeling separate from my rulership. <laughs> so there is a problem with separation. So the course is saying to me, okay, I accept that you're not going to be willing to give all your preconceived notions up. So it's okay, don't sweat it, that you still may think you have your preconceived notions of what the problem is. It's not necessary for you to let go of all your preconceived notions of what the problem is. It's okay if you still got your ideas about what you think the problem is. So what is necessary? to entertain some doubt. Who in here can do doubt? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a doubt master. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the course never asks you to do anything that you can't already do. That's why it would say to you, entertain some doubt. I think it's funny. It's like, I want you to doubt. What is that I want you to doubt? It says, I want you to doubt the reality of your version of what your problems are. I want you to, I want you to just say, I'm willing, I'm a little bit willing for me to be wrong about what I think the problem is. That's, that's all he said. Just, would you just, can I get you to just maybe suspect that what you think the problem is with them might not really be the problem or what you think this problem is right now. You might be totally wrong and what you think is, this, is the problem or issue is not the problem or issue at all. Would you be willing to just doubt a little bit that that maybe you're not right. <laughs> <laughs> Only a little. He's like begging us, like, like, would you be willing to entertain some doubt about what you think the problem is? Wow, wow. Check this out. The reality of your version of what your problem. Are. are you willing to doubt what you think your problem is with your child? <laughs> are you willing to doubt what you think the problem with your co-workers is? Are you willing to doubt your version? You pretty much like a version. <laughs> 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 and this is your very first time. <laughs> like a version. <laughs> I want your heartbeat. Next to mine. <laughs> we must. We can be. Uh, we can be sincere, you all, but we don't have to be serious. Okay, so we can still have a good time here while we learn. We don't have to get serious, Earl. Because I'm serious as a heart attack. Yeah. I am. I'm so sick of this. Yeah. I'm so sick of this. I'm so sick of this. 
I'm so sick of the separation. I'm so sick of the divisiveness. I'm so sick of the fear. Mm -hmm. I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of it, sick of it, sick of it, sick of it. So I don't recognize what the problem is. Mm -hmm. Because if I recognize what the yep. problem is, that problem would be solved. So I yes. really don't recognize what the, I might be hearing what the problem is, yeah. but I haven't actually recognized what I'm hearing yet. Right? We haven't recognized, we're hearing this, but we're still seeing having some issues, right? Mm -hmm. So that means we really haven't recognized what the problem is because it would be gone the once you actually recognize it. So that's how you keep, how do you, <laughs> how do you keep from fooling yourself about whether or not your problem is gone? Is whether or not it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> if it's over, it's been solved. <laughs> if it's gone, it's over. So the Course says if you were ever healed, really healed, one, you would only need to be healed one time because if it was a real healing, it could reoccur. Mm -hmm. The nature of a real healing is it never comes back, ever. So if you haven't mm -hmm. solved something to the point it never shows up again, you never healed it in the first place mm -hmm. because you didn't recognize what the problem was. So are you willing to entertain <laughs> some doubt about what you think the problem is that you're dealing with right now? Would you be willing to go... I, you know what? I hope I have been wrong. I hope I'm wrong. If I think I'm broke and I can't pay my bill, I hope I'm wrong about that. <laughs> if I tell myself I can never have relationships that are beautiful and satisfying and accepting me for who I really am without having to friggin' change some kind of way in order to be loved. If I recognize that I never have that experience. So I hope I'm wrong about everything that makes me unhappy. Mm -hmm. And I hope you're wrong about everything that makes you unhappy. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to be right and sad and hurting. Mm -hmm. Even if you want to be right and suffer. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So he's saying, <laughs> you're trying to recognize that you have been given the answer. So how do you recognize you have been given the answer? By recognizing the problem. Why don't you see clearly what the answer is to everything you're dealing with right now? He says, because you still don't recognize the problem. So that the problem and the answer can be brought together. And that's when you can be at peace. So you're not going to be at peace until you recognize the problem and see it solved. He says, that's when you're going to have the, that's when you're going to feel peaceful. When you do what? Bring the problem to the answer. And the Course in Miracles, the wisdom texts, they are the answers. So the area of my life, would that mean the area of your life that you're not at peace would be the area of your life that you don't recognize what the problem is and you don't recognize what the answer is and, that, and that's the area of your life you haven't brought the problem to the answer. That's the area of your life you don't really recognize what the problem is. So that's why this lesson is called Let Me Recognize the Problem So <laughs> It Can Be Solved. So what are some of the things that have been going through your mind as you've been listening to this? Anybody? What's the solution? Yeah, what's the solution? I know that you're telling me that the problem is separation. And what I'm and what I'm saying is, all we've been doing is the solution, mm -hmm. because I've been going sentence mm -hmm. by sentence through what he's been telling me, what the course is telling us to do. This is the solution. Okay. It's saying what is the problem, what is the answer, not assuming that I know. Realizing that I should be willing to let go of my idea of what I think the answer is so that I can be told the answer. Mm -hmm. that That is the answer. Mm -hmm. For me, it's like move out of the way and my assumption that I know what the problem is that's making me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And it has to be shown what really is the problem. Right. That, that's what that's it, it sounds kind of crazy when you hear how simple it is right mm -hmm. that that all the thing that is telling us to do is say what is the, what is the problem what is the answer I'm not going to assume that I know mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell myself I only have one problem 
and I don't have a whole lot of different problems. See, don't forget the don't forget the instructions we were being given. We were being, we were being literally told all your problems are the same and you need to start seeing it that way and calling it that. That's a very specific instruction. And it's an, and it's an instruction that any of us could do right now. Every one of us sitting in this room, whether we, whether we believe it or not, could say, I only have one problem. And that's the only thing that Spirit is asking us to do. Look, dude, will you say what I'm telling you to say to get the miracle that you want right now? Yes. Yeah, will you just say what I'm telling you to say in order for you to get the miracle I want right now, that you want right now? And, and you don't even have to believe it. I mean, check that out. You don't even have to accept it. You don't even, And what I found in 44 years of teaching the course, watching myself and others, is it's rarely you meet people who actually do that. It's rarely you meet a person that's studying the course that will stop it and say to me, let me recognize the problem so the problem can be solved. I only have one problem. I think I got a whole lot of problems, but I really only have one problem. I just have to be a little willing to let go of my version of what I think the problem is. And I need to ask what the problem is and ask what the answer is, realizing I will be told. And that if I find myself trying to make everything that's happening in my life complex, that's just me attempting not to solve the problem and keep it and to keep this pain and suffering going. Mm -hmm. So I need to tell myself I don't have a lot of problems because that makes me think of complexity and I go into overwhelm. But if I thought I just had one problem, that would cool me down a lot more than thinking I got 20 or 30. Deep. And then the man said, but what do I do? But I just got through telling you. The course just got through telling us. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts that anybody's having or questions about that before we finish it up? So if I think that I have a problem that I don't have enough money. Right. Then that's a preconceived notion. That's a preconceived notion. So How do you think, what you think the problem is? What I think the problem is. Is a preconceived notion. So mm -hmm. I need to take that and I need to tell God, I need to say, I hope I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I hope this isn't the problem. Mm -hmm. What is the problem? Mm -hmm. And what is the solution? Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. See, and then, and then, and then you will be answered. See, what the man would say when I tell her Earl what's going to, she's going to be told when she says what's the problem. But that's also been answered too because we've been told the problem is separation. So he, we're trapped in the truth. No matter what you do, you're going to end up with something working out to your benefit. But even saying that the problem is the separation, mm -hmm. that's preconceived, right? Mm-hmm. Well, it, it's, it? well, it's not really because you didn't think the problem was separation until you just read that. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't preconceived. Okay. You, you didn't come in the room thinking that the only problem you have in any area of your life is somehow based on separation. Okay. So okay. That, your, your preconceived notion would be anything you've been telling yourself the problem is. <laughs> okay. that, you know, whatever, that story, whatever that story is you're telling yourself, that is the preconceived notion. That is the ego. The ego is our made of answers that we're making up. And so we don't ask God mm -hmm. what the problem is and what the answer is because we already think we know it. Mm -hmm. we just, that's, that's why I said, when I assume you don't know now, assume you might not know because that's the first thing you do when you think you know what's going on is you assume you do know. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. I think this yeah. is really true. Yeah. Is it spirit, you know, I, because I'll, I'll ask spirit, okay. Um, what's the problem? And I don't wait for the answer. I'm going to create one myself. <laughs> and then if I'm not at peace, well, I didn't wait for the answer. <laughs> and I didn't even know what the problem was. Exactly. Right. <laughs> see, see, we are here, now, in fact, with the cause, we are here, those little answers like that. Mm -hmm. And we'll forget that it's, in a way, it's totally new and it wasn't the way that I was looking at it at first. So don't try to skip to the next stage. Yeah. You know? He said, don't worry about what comes after saying, I don't know what the problem yeah. really is. Mm -hmm. Just start, say that, I don't know what the problem really is. Because mm -hmm. when you say that, then it opens up possibilities for the answer to come to you in an infinite number of ways. Because you haven't decided what your version yeah. of what the answer yeah. is. So you're looking for it to answer, be the answer the way you've made up. You know, if I made it up, my cousin yeah. got to apologize 
then I could get a million other ways to get past that block and I would never hear them because I'm paying attention to my version of what I yeah. think the problem is. And that's what the Course is saying, that in order for you to get the answer that God wants to give you and the relief you want and that issue ended, then there's a certain attitude that you need to be taking. So, which is, I only have one problem, complexity is just a trick to keep the problem unsolved. Nobody in the world can solve all the problems of the world, so I'm not even looking for you all to do that anymore. And to recognize that I want to ask what the problem is and what the answer is and don't assume that I know, and, be, and I'll be told, and I won't know what happens next until I do it. And we want to get assurances of exactly what's going to happen when we say it. And, and, but that's going to be tailor-made to your need in that moment. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to what I'm saying? That's why you can't really get into what the form of it is going to look like. Because that's going to, the form of how the answer appears is going to always come in the form that's going to meet the need that you have at that moment. So you might say you might help me change my tire in the middle of the night, and then but you might need a, a lift to the hospital, and that's the way that comes back to you as I give it to you. The good that you do doesn't necessarily come back in the same form you gave it out mm -hmm. in, and that's what the course is. In. I want you to I want you to ask these questions. What is it? What the problem is? What the answer is? I'm not going to assume that I know it. I'm, I'm going to say that I have only one problem. I want you to do that as a symbolic gesture to show that you're willing to obey and to be told by spirit what to do, and you're willing to do it. So, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, going a little more with the example of the money, uh, I think I have a problem, I don't have enough money. And I'm realizing, well, that really is not the problem. And if I can be open to saying, well, there really is only one problem, and that is separation, mm -hmm. so please give me the answer. Then, if I'm understanding this right, the answer will come certainly unique to the specific situation. Right. The answer, and whatever he, he maybe, said, maybe a job will appear. And he, he, says you, he, he says you will be told, and, and the answer comes back in the form you need it in. Yeah. See, that, and that's the way you want it. You want it in the form, but what we're being taught, as far as I can see, we're being taught how to ask. Mm -hmm. We're actually being taught how to get, get out of the way by following this that I'm telling you, because it's symbolic of your willingness mm -hmm. to have me be in charge. That's what doing the workbook lessons and read. It's really, it's really you just, your way of saying, see, I really am sincere about this. <laughs> The spirit to take care of the rest. The, check it out. He goes, um, the shorter practice period for the day will be set by time. Will not be set by time. Mm -hmm. You're going to practice it as much as you need it. <laughs> it's not going to be set by a certain time of day. You need to practice this when you need to. So what's going to happen today? You will see many problems today. Mm -hmm. You will see many problems today. You will see many problems today. Each problem calling. I love that. Picture that, visualize that. A problem calling for an answer. Our efforts will be directed towards recognizing what is our, what is our, what, what our efforts going to be directed to again? Recognizing that there is only one problem and one answer. One problem, one answer. In this recognition, there is only one problem and only one answer. Are all problems resolved? How many problems? All problems. You mean any problem? All problems are resolved. When you really recognize there is only one problem, there is only one answer. When you really recognize that all problems are resolved, and in, and in the recognition that all your problems are gone, in the recognition that all your problems have been solved, there is peace. You're going to feel really good when you see all the problems you think you have are gone. They're vanished. They're, they are no more. 
Wow. Well, that's powerful. Wow. Can you then also say, when I get out of my own way and I let God give me the answer, because God knows and God orchestrates my life, I completely trust and am totally faith in God, knowing the answer and will orchestrate it for me. That is where peace can come. Absolutely. That's, a, that's exactly the same thing. It's... I don't, that's still a version of, I don't know what the problem is, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm giving it up to something smarter than me mm -hmm. yeah. to handle it. It's still, it's still coming back to, I'm willing, and, and I wouldn't be open to your answer, God, unless I was willing to suspect maybe it's a possibility that my version might not be true. That's, that's what makes me able to go to the higher power, is because I'm willing to get off my position. So, don't be deceived by the form of problems today. Don't be fooled now, what does that mean? What does that mean, don't be deceived by the form of problems today? Don't be fooled into thinking you have many different problems today. Don't go back when you walk out of here telling yourself you got this a financial problem, a job problem, a relationship problem, a health problem, you got all these these issues. He said, said, don't be fooled. And, you know, it goes from a toothache, you know, to you thinking you got car trouble. Don't be fooled by those problems. That problem is still... One problem. There's still, there's still just one problem. That's what it means when it says don't be deceived. To be deceived is believing you have a lot of problems. That's being deceived when it says be not deceived. Then it says whenever any difficulty seems to rise, whenever any difficulty comes up, whenever you have a difficulty comes uh, come up this week, if you have a difficulty come up today, if you have a problem come up today, tell yourself how fast. Quickly. Tell yourself what? Quickly, whenever any difficulty seems to rise, tell yourself quickly. Let me recognize this problem so it can be solved. You know, I just had a flat tire. Let me recognize this problem so it can be solved. I have sadness. Let me recognize this problem so it can be solved. I got a difficulty. This difficulty just came up. This is what I want you to say. As soon as something comes up, as soon as some kind of difficulty in your life comes up, as soon as any kind of difficulty comes up in a relationship, in anything, whenever any difficulty comes up, tell yourself quickly, let me recognize this problem. Let me recognize this problem. Let me recognize this problem. Let me recognize this problem so it can be solved. Let me recognize it. I want you to say that first. Whenever anything comes up that looks like it's a problem or frightening you, the first thing I want you to do is to quickly tell yourself, let me recognize this problem so it can be solved. And then what do you do next? You suspend all judgment. That's the same as not assuming you know what to do. <laughs> Soon as you say, let me recognize the problem, then you stop your idea of what you think the problem is. <laughs> if possible, what I want you to do, if possible, when the difficulty comes up, when the difficulty comes up, this is what I want you to do. If possible, if possible, close your eyes for a moment, close your eyes for a moment, close your eyes for a moment, and ask what the problem is. Let me recognize this problem so it can be solved. Let me close my eyes for a moment. Let me ask what the problem is. I need to tell myself when the difficulty come up, you need to tell yourself, let me recognize this problem so it can be solved. I'm going to close my eyes for a moment, and I'm going to ask what the problem is. I just had a situation come up that freaked me out. What do I need to do? I need to tell myself quickly, let me recognize this problem so it can be solved. I need to suspend all my judgment about what I really think the problem is. I need to close my eyes if, it, if at all possible for a moment, and then ask, what is this problem? What is this problem? What is this problem? What is my financial problem? What is my health problem? What is the problem? What is the problem? And you will be heard. Mm -hmm. You will be heard. Mm -hmm. And you will be answered. Mm -hmm. Phew. Hmm. Stop here. Mm -hmm. All right. Ah. And then we'll do a quick little thing right here at the end. Mm. 
I need mighty companions that will help me remember this. I am asking for people in my life that will help me remember this, that wants to practice this, that wants to do this. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you for sharing with me. Uh, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, uh, you can just go to my website, Earl Purdy, E A R L P U R D Y, Earl Purdy dot com. I really would appreciate it as a full time teacher of the Course in Miracles. Thank you for sharing with me. You can use uh, Venmo or the Cash App or PayPal or Zelle. All you need is my email address. And my email address is Earl Purdy at EarlPurdy.com. I know it might look like I'm obsessed with Earl Purdy, but uh, I'm just <laughs> trying to give you a little information. <laughs> uh, that's my email address, Earl Purdy at EarlPurdy.com. Thank you for sharing with me. I'm available for clarity sessions, and I'm available for coaching sessions, and I'm available for astrological and numerological sessions. Go to my website. You can self-book an appointment with me right from my website. And all of my classes are on YouTube and also on Facebook. Mm. And if you're in Denver, come to 1555 Race Street, 1555 Race Street, Race Street in Denver, 80206, 1 p.m. Sunday Mountain Time. If you want to come hang out with us in person to let ourselves hear this. I'm telling you, is that everything? Earl, is it Earl Purdy Services or Earl Purdy on Venmo? Uh, either one. Okay. Yeah, Earl Purdy will do it. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, take a breath, Holy Spirits. Let me recognize the problem so the problem can be solved. Let me recognize the problem so the problem can be solved. Let me recognize the problem so the problem can be solved. Let me recognize the problem so the problem can be solved. Let us recognize the problem so the problem can be solved. Let us recognize the problem so the problem can be solved. Let us recognize the problem so the problem can be solved. You want to ask what the problem is, ask what the problem is, and ask what the answer is, and don't assume that you know. Ask what the problem is, ask what the answer is, and don't assume that you know what the problem is or what the answer is. What are you gonna do to have your problem solved? What are you going to do to have your problem solved? Tell yourself, I only have one problem. 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 So as you leave today, when you go out into the world today, and you find yourself saying you got different problems and different issues to deal with, try to remember this, this class and what we heard today. Mm -hmm. That complexity is an attempt not to recognize the problem. Don't make it complex. Don't make it complex. Don't make your friends' problems complex. Don't make your relatives' problems complex. Remind, remind yourself that you're friends and relatives may not know what the problem is and if they think they have a problem they definitely don't know what the problem is and if you think you have a problem that means you don't know what the problem is the problem is from higher power you have to ask what the problem is and ask what the answer is and suspend all your judgment about what you think the problem is and you will be heard and you will be answered you will be heard 
and you are answered. Mighty companions, do you think that might stick with you a little bit? You think I that might stick so. with you a little bit? <laughs> you think you the next time you're telling yourself all the different issues you got to deal with, do you think it might come, you know, you might make them like, oh, I remember. I, I'm supposed to just remember I got one problem. Thank you. Love you. Watch it at least four times. <laughs>